the symbol of a statues which are found in the Indus Valley civilizations are very much related to modern Hinduism. Hello dear friends, so in the last video we had a discussion on the general aspects of stone age. We covered that there is a Paleolithic age, Mesolithic age and Neolithic age. So today in this in the second video we will have a discussion on Indus Valley civilizations. This will not be a full video but this video will definitely make you understand that what is what is the different aspects and concepts of Indus Valley civilizations. So I will be taking about 20 minutes to make you understand on this topic. As you know, the history is divided to three parts. I will just explain this and then we will continue this writing. The history is divided into three parts. The part one is prehistory. The second part is proto-history. And third part of history is the history. So do you know in prehistory, the history, especially the time period who has no literary sources, no literary sources, that tract of history is known as prehistory. Like the Paleolithic age, Mesolithic age, and Neolithic age had no writings. So this type of history in among us is known as prehistory. The proto-history, who the time and the human who had literary writings, who had literary writings, but these literary writings is not yet deciphered, not yet deciphered. Matlab, we have their writings, but we can't read it, we can't understand it. So this type of history will be the proto-history. And the third who has literary sources will be known as history. So in India, the Stone Age, the Dichalcolithic Age, and all these ages are categorized in, in the category of prehistory. Matlab, we don't have literary sources for that. In India, the Indus Valley Civilization is a Bronze Civilization, and it had literary sources. We have their resources, but we have not deciphered the resources. That is why this this Indus Valley civilizations will be belonging to the type of proto history. So today we are going to discuss about Indus Valley civilizations, and I will take I will be taking about 20-25 minutes to make you understand that what are the different aspects of Indus Valley civilizations. And in our class lecture, we discuss in more detail. All right, okay. So when we go here if find the settlement of Indus Valley Civilization. Okay, the settlement, especially Indus Valley Civilizations was starting from this Mehagar region of the Northwest India. And then it is coming some parts of Rajasthan and then some parts of Haryana you have, Punjab and then Gujarat you have. So basically the settlement of Indus Valley Civilizations is only in the Northern West part of India. So let us discuss, let us discuss and start having discussion that how the civilizations originated and it started. If we discuss about the origin, then what you find that in the year called 1921 and 22, there are two important excavations, archaeologists, Rathal Das Banerjee and Daya Ramsani. So in 1921, Arappa was discovered. And then in 1922, Mohan was discovered by Rachel Das Banerjee. So first person was Dharam Sani and then second, Rachel Das Banerjee, they have discovered Indus Valley civilizations. So for the point was that the Harappa was the first city which was discovered and the people decided that we have a civilization of about 5,000 years ago. Before that, when the Matt Muller and the James Mill were writing about Indian history, they had no knowledge that Indians had this much civilization. So in 1920s, we come to know that the Indians have about 5,000 year old civilizations. So the Harappa was the first city which was discovered in. So Harappa was the first city which was discovered in 1921. Mohan Jodaro. 
was the second city which was discovered in 1922 and after that a series of harappan sites have been discovered so the first important debate happened about that that what should be the name of the civilizations so the initially the people said that the name of the civilizations can be harappa because harappa was the first city which was discovered so that is why the people call it as a harappan civilizations but the debate happened that after 1922 within 15 to 20 years more than 5 to 6 more sites have been discovered so when these sites have been discovered from these regions especially these all regions then the people started deciding that we should rename it so there is a person called john marshall john he was an archaeologist so john marshall said that since the most of the sites of indus valley civilizations have been situated and settled on the river of indus which is coming from the tibetan region via jammu and kashmir towards seen punjab and going into the arabians so this is a river which is situated here so especially it was decided that since the most of the sites the most of the sites are situated on the river either on indus or the tributaries of indus river so john marshall decided to call the civilization as indus valley civilization because the most of the sites are situated at the bank of indus and its tributaries river was well, satluj ravi bias and jhelum so on these are the rivers on that basis but when india got independence and initially most of the sites were in pakistan region so now the debate happened should we call it indus indus valley civilization because the, there are some sites which are not found and which are outside of this indus tributaries region so that is why the debate started happening so the some of the sites are also found near the saraswati river which is basically which was especially going through these regions so saraswati river was here especially the people decided that it should be called sindhu saraswati sindhu saraswati means it should be called as indus saraswati civilization okay so there is one such debate about this civilization that it should be called indus saraswati civilizations and saraswati river was the then ghagra athrabi so this is the way the harappan civilization was named either as harappan civilization indus valley civilizations or sindhu saraswati civilizations but historians in their writing they use all these three terminology to define and talk about indus valley civilization or harappan civilizations now let us see that what was the main origin theory about the indus valley civilizations how the people were settled in this region and what is the main debate about indus valley civilizations if we discuss about it then what we find so there are basically three different approaches are given to understand indus valley civilization in the first approach it is said by a set of historian especially by john marshall so john marshall is a group of historian so john marshall and his supporters say that the people of indus valley the people of indus valley especially they were indigenous so it's a indigenous theory that the people of indus valley were the a long incidence history of the soil matlab especially the point is that they have been settled on this land on this land of indus valley civilization in the north western part of india for a long time so they were the indigenous people but there is other theory which is especially forwarded by e j h mate so this historians claim that these people were not indians they were not local people so he forwarded a different theory and this theory is is called as diffusionist theory according to the diffusionist theory the people of indus valley civilizations had migrated from sumer region so sumer sumer is a city state capital city state of the southern mesopotamia so these people had migrated from mesopotamia so they are not a local people so indus valley civilization is settled from there whereas there is a other set of ideas and especially this idea is forwarded by mortimer wheeler he says that indus valley in the indus valley civilization 
people did not migrate as the diffusionist theory argue because we have many such items available here which are not available in the mesopotamian civilizations so he said that instead of people instead of people the ideas have migrated so the idea the ideas of civilization may have migrated from mesopotamian region to the northwestern part of india and then the people of indus valley civilizations established an urban organizations on that ideas so mortimer velu provides the idea especially that the idea may have migrated instead of people so this is the way this is a debate on the origin of indus valley civilizations that the people were in indigenous and the idea may have come from that region that is why they had a very vast and urban organizations now let us discuss the most important aspects and features of indus valley civilizations because you know that just after indus valley civilization we had a vedic age in india and vedic is generally divided into two parts that is starts from 1500 and that one ends in 1000 bc so that is the early vedic age and the second is a later vedic age So in the early Vedic age, in around 1500 BC, the society was pastoral. The people were dependent on cattle, and later on, after the discovery of iron, the people were more dependent on agriculture. So from pastoral, the people became agricultural, and before the time of 600 BC, the people had no urban sense. But the point is that before 1500, before 1000 of the 1500, we have evidence that. the indus valley people were so much modernized they were organized and they had a city plan so this civilization was urban civilization so let us see the general features of indus valley civilizations and we will understand it conceptually if we talk about the general features of indus indus valley civilizations what we found is most interesting for us what is interesting for us is that The first debate is that whether the Indus Valley civilization was rural or urban. Okay, whether Indus Valley civilization was rural or urban. As we know that they have a very vast town planning. If we say they have a very vast town planning, it doesn't mean that the civilization was only dependent on urban centers. Urban centers is always dependent on agriculture, and agriculture always happens in rural areas. So, for the agricultural productions, surplus production, they have to depend on rural area also. But the most of the cities of under Indus Valley civilization was urban only, and they were very modernized. So, let us discuss what is the most important and general features of Indus Valley civilizations. If we talk about one of the first feature of Indus Valley civilization is town planning. That their town was well planned. How their town was well planned? Let us discuss one by one. If we discuss, especially the one aspect of their town planning is streets. Streets, especially, were made from north to south, east to west. The streets were very much wide. Streets were very much wide. It was compared like a highway. We have found evidence that in Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, and Kalibangla, the streets were in the same layout. So, streets of Indus Valley civilization in the town, especially in the town, the streets was very nice. So, streets is one such example of the town planning. Other feature in this Indus Valley civilization, apart from the streets, were the buildings. the buildings are most important why buildings are most most important because the houses which were made in the building the houses there were different types of houses in one house there are different types of rooms suppose in one room may be a kitchen one room may be a drawing room one room may be a bedroom one room may be a guest room so there are different types of rooms are found in one houses apart from rooms so one feature in the house is room other feature in the house is the balcony that every house in the indus valley civilization had balcony other important feature of the house apart from balcony that all the houses had windows and these windows were opening 
at the main streets where in the main streets apart from it the all the streets especially all the houses have their own bathrooms and toilets their own bathrooms and toilets the other important general feature is that the bridge upon this civilizations were made the bridge upon this houses was made especially the size of the brick was 7 into 14 into 28 that is the ratio of 1 2 and 4 which is the same ratio of the modern bricks are constructed they were using three type of bricks at this time these type of bricks they were using were made either it was mud brick or it was burnt one or sun dried the stones were also used in their houses stones and we have also found pilots on the way they had a drainage system so all the houses the all the toilets and the bathrooms of the houses the waste water is to go to the drainage system at a local street then at the main street so they had a very vast drainage system in mohanjadro we have found great bath which is considered to be a religious place where the people is to come and take a holy bath so there are many such features of town planning so one is the street other is the features of building other important aspects that they, they had a very wide road so these are the important planning of the towns and towns were constructed very nicely if we take one example of mohanjadro then what you find that the town of mohanjadro were divided into two parts one was citadel one was citadel and so this is a feature of citadel where especially the traders masters and the powerful people may have been living other towns were the lower town so this is a lower town so there were different sets of planning in indus valley civilizations and town planning is the most often important feature of indus valley civilization a bit go further but we find their economic life is very interesting for us why economic life is interesting It is, it is very much interesting because they were based on agriculture. So their agriculture is most important from, we have a very few evidences where the rice is found, but the most important that vargle, grapes, feet. So these are the items which were cultivated by these people. So through agriculture, so agriculture was the most important aspect through agriculture they were doing trade so they had a surplus of agriculture surplus of productions so they were doing trade the trade had three important aspects one trade was of grains so they were doing trades of grains other important was art and craft art and craft they were making they were making jewelry potteries seals so these are the important points in the economic aspect of so art and crafts they had a very different trade routes they had a trade with afghanistan in mesopotamia in southern india especially from the kular mines they used to brought gold from rajasthan region they used to brought bronze from afghanistan they used to bring so the trading the trade was very much important for their survival so one is agriculture trade art and crafts trade routes these things are very much important for their writings apart from that they also had coins and that their communication system was very fast because in trade routes the most important aspect will be the communication system So in terms of the communication system, what was happening? They used to have two types of transportation. One was land route and other was 
water routes. Suppose that the most of the sites of industrial civilization is situated at the near the bank of rivers. If the people are coming from Lothal, going to Mohanjadro, so they can directly go to the Avian Sea. From there, they can enter into the opposite site of industrial industry river, and then they can directly come to Mohanjadro or Harap. So the water routes that must frequent route we have found blood card. So bullet card is one of the example of the communication, communication system in Indus Valley civilizations. If we go further, if we take other aspects of other features of Indus Valley civilization, is that their social life is most important. In the social life, we know that the status of women was something. So we know the status of women. We know that the society was divided into there is a merchant class. So the four type of people were living. One was a priest. Otherwise, a, a class, which was a ruling class. Other class, we found that there is a class of philosophers. And then we find that there is a merchant class. And then there are farmer classes. The society was divided like this one. The women were given a lot of prominence here because we have found that we have a Devdasi, especially a dancing girl. If we take example of dancing girl, then what you find? Dancing girl. Through this, we find that the woman was given prominence. We don't. We we do not have only a dancing girl in the statue form. The dancing girl image is also found on seals. So, if the the, the girl image is found on seal, it clearly means that the women were given so much prominence and importance in the social life. The other important aspect is the culture. Apart from the status of women and girls, the culture is most important. In the culture, the important aspect is that the entertainment. So these people had also entertainment. And entertainment can be seen in terms of fishing. Fishing, hunting. Okay, so fishing, hunting. So this is the important part of their hunting events. And then they had a chase. Chase also. The chase feeding is an important aspect. Apart from this, they both male and female of the Indus Valley civilizations were formed of jewelry. So we have found many evidences that the jewelry was made of both important stones, precious stones, silver and gold plus bronze. So these are the metals which were used for making jewelry at the time. So their social life status was also very much good. If we go there, in the third, that is the fourth aspect in the religious. If we see that these people were very much religious and the religion, the, the symbol of gods, the symbol of statues which are found in the Indus Valley civilizations are very much related to modern Hinduism. Suppose we have one example that here we found mother goddess. So we have an example of mother goddess in, in the Indus Valley civilization. We have Pasupati. Pasupati is found here. Okay. One person is stands here like this. So in terms of we see other important that the trees were worshipped. Tree especially if we talk about people. So we have evidence of people tree. We found one seal where one person is sitting which is compared with the Pasupati. And with one person, there are some trees and some animals are there. So according to this, we conclude that he may be a god of Pasupati. We have an example of Nandi, which is uh, compared with the modern Hinduism. So apart from Pasupati, the people also worship tree. Other important were the animals. So animals were also very much... But we have many evidences that there were type of semi-human god in this era. The semi-human we have, we have an example that when there is one god, the half of the person is of man and half of the person may be of animals. So semi-gods are also existing in Harappan civilization. So the many of the gods of Harappan civilizations were very much related to modern Hinduism. They had a burial practice also. There were different types of burial practice, practices in the different sites of Indus Valley civilization. So the religious feature is very much most important and these people were very much prosperous in their religious aspects. If we, if we go further, then what we find? 
then the political aspect is also very much important for Indus Valley people. How political? Because the one such debate that whether this the political rule of Indus Valley civilization whether it was a centralized or decentralized. Decentralized. Don't know if you discuss this is a person which is considered like a priest king in Indus Valley civilization. Priest king in the Indus Valley civilizations. So whether it was centralized or not centralized, so the people had concluded, especially the historians had concluded that these people, the major feature of the Indus Valley people were trade and commerce. So there was no central rule, no, there was no one capital from all these, for all these regions, but in this state, the political nature of Indus Valley people were type of city states. So these people were called as city states and they were called as city states only. Why? Do you know why? Because they were ruling for the city purpose and the, all the sites of Indus Valley civilizations were related to each other for their trade and commerce purpose. Okay. So this is the political nature of Indus Valley civilizations. Okay. If you go further, what we find the language and script is the other feature. Till now, we have not yet deciphered that what the main language of Indus Valley people. The historians have counted that there are about 356 alphabets. Some people say that it has more than 500 alphabets. So the historians have no common consensus among the number of alphabets found in the Indus Valley civilization. But the one of the main features that we have to know that the language of the Indus Valley people were pictorial in form. That most of the language were in the pictorial in form. So the language of the Indus Valley people were pictorial and is it is to be written from right to left and there are more than 500 alphabets are found in the scripts of Indus Valley civilization. So this is one of the few examples of general features of Indus Valley civilizations that we discuss now. Let us discuss the other important aspect that are the sites that there are many sites in the Indus Valley civilizations and from these sites the most important points which are found are generally asked in the examination that suppose the horse the evidence of horse is found from this site the, the evidence of greenery are found from these sites so let us have a brief look on the sites of Indus Valley civilizations and then we will go further the other important aspect of Indus Valley civilization so if we go to the site then what we find so especially this is the main route of Indus Valley civilization, especially it will start from this is the Gujarat region. If you find this is a Gujarat region where the Indus Valley civilization were settled. Here you will find so if there are some of the sites you can note down. One is Lothal is in Gujarat, especially the southwestern Gujarat. We have Dholavira, we have Surkrotada, the Surkrotada site is here. Then if you go to the Indus Valley river, what you find that you have a site of Mohan Jodaro, here is Chan Hudro, then we have Kot Biji. So these are the important sites which are found on Indus Valley Civilization. So now let us go to the important sites of Indus Valley Civilization. So you know that the first important site of Indus Valley Civilization is Harappa. Harappa, which was discovered in the year 12, 1929, and it was discovered by Dayara Saini. From Harappa, we have found a piece of poetry with Indus script. Cubical limestone weight is here. The fence length we have found. We have found a copper bullet cut from this area. We have a great granaries found from Harappa. We have a coffin burials only found. The coffin burials, which is only found in the sites of urban simulation, was only from Harappa. Then what you find that they have terracotta figurines in Mohan Jadru, which was discovered in 1922 by Rakhal Das Banerji, it has a great bath, they had a great granary, they have unicorn seal where the most of you fit are here only. We have found the dancing well from Mohan Jodro only. We have a seal of man with beard. So one seal of one seal is found, which is considered to be a Pasupati god. In this world, what we find that it was a seal of man with deer, elephant, tigers, rhinos are around, and this is considered to be a Pasupati seal. If you go further, then what do you find? Do you know that they have a bronze buffalo also? So, and then the 
the statue of beard man is on top bro so this is the most important aspects of indus valley civilization if you go further the other side for surta uh, especially the surta gandor which is found in the baluchistan region it was discovered by steen here we found flint plates stone vessels and shell beads are most important uh, they had a trading point between harappan and babylon babylon is a from the mesopotamian civilization so this is the most important general features of the sites called surtagora in harappan civilization let us discuss the other important site and these sites let we are just going to have a general view on these sites so especially this sanhudra which was discovered in 1931 by ng majumdar where we have find a vengeful fat in pot is discovered here beard maker shop is here we have a footprint of a dog who was chasing a cat we have also found especially it is a only city which was without citadel so we know that there is to be citadel in all these sites is when the site the site the city was given to two important sites one was citadel and other is a lower town where the normal people living is called lower town and where the political leaders merchants and the rich people is to live for the citadel jisam dug wall okay so this is the only site of indus valley civilization where there was no citadel so this is one site other is amri we have kalimandra which is discovered in after independence in 1953 this is in especially the hanuman ward district of rajasthan here we have found the lower fortified town wooden drainage is available copper or we have evidence of earthquake so evidence of earthquake happened in kalimandra here we have some camel bone is found from this region pile altars are found is here then can then we have forod land is also there in this regions okay rhinosaur evidence is found from amri region which was discovered in 1935 by mg majumdar if you go to lothal which is in the gujarat state what you find here that in gujarat we have a port town the lothal is situated in gujarat on the and it is very near to the sea area that is why we say that the port town is there we have a grey beard ivory weight proper dog is available and then first man made port is there they also had a rice evidence from lothal so we have found rice has from lothal and then we also found a dog yard in lothal sites so this is the main important feature of these sites if we go further these three important sites are also important this sotko tada site which was discovered in 1961 in the gujarat region this was discovered by jp joshi and the most important find we found that there is only one evidence of horses found from this site so horses were not available to these people and but we find that the bones of horses are available from the sotko tada region so it means we find that the horse was there but we have not found horse evidences from other sites of indus valley civilizations apart from this we have found beads stone flower beads from the banamali we have found there is there is evidence of barley they used to have the only city with the real estates they had a twy flow of system the plowing of land twy was found from here and then we have a largest number of barley grains are available from banamali region if you discuss about dola vira which were discovered in the 1960s and its excavations were the further excavations were done in 1985 and this was found by r s smith so here we have its sulfuric water management system is found from dhola vira if you go further what you find that it is a only site to be divided into three parts the most of the sites that we discussed that there were three two parts lower town and upper town that was citadel but it was the only sites which has been divided into three parts we have a giant water reservoir a level from dhola vira we have a unique water, water harvesting system this dhola vira region as a in the run up course where the rainy season was not every year there is a human climate that is why water reservoir is most important they had dams they had embankments a stadium and they had also a rock cut architecture so these are the general features of the sites that whatever items we have discovered from these sites and these items which are discovered from sites is very much important in many examinations and upsc especially the question is asked in the multiple choice questions or there may be a site and what items are discovered from the sites so this is the way we are going to discuss this okay so now we have finished all these things in a brief discussion we were just having a 
general view of Indus Valley civilizations. Now we will have a short discussion on as this civilization was working, how it going into the decline phase. So let us discuss it just it now. So do you know there are many arguments about the decline of Indus Valley civilizations? I will be just telling you a brief manner that you know that the Indus Valley civilization is divided into three different phases. If we just discuss about the phase, then what we see the phase of Indus Valley civilization. Okay. So the general phase is that it is said that there is a three phase. Okay, how many phase? Three phase. The second phase is mature phase of Indus Valley civilization. Mature phase. So this mature phase was around 2600 to 1900. 2600 to 1900. The premature phase. The phase was that is before the Harappan civilization was premature phase and it was from 3300 to 2700. So it was a phase of 700 years. This phase was also a year of 700 years. And the third phase is a later phase. So later phase will be from 1900 to 1750. So Indus Valley civilization declined in the year called 1750. So how it declined? It was a process of about 150 years from 1900 to 1750. That is the main period that is discussed by the historian that it was a period of declining phase of Indus Valley civilizations. So how it declined? Let us discuss in brief manner. One of the first person who started discussing about the main causes behind the decline of Indus Valley civilization is a person called Ram Prasad Chanda. He is the person who brought the idea that these civilizations may have declined because of the Aryan Aryan invasions. So there is a debate by Max Muller in the 19th century that the Aryans came and these Aryans these Aryans came from Central Asia. So it was a debate given by Max Muller in the 19th century that the Aryans were not Indian origin these people were coming from Central Asia. So Mortimer Wheeler in 1940s when he was discussing and discovering the other important aspects of Mohan Jadru and Harappa, he concluded that it may be due to the Aryan invasion. So the first set of historian is Ram Prasad Chanda, but he had changed his views later on. He had changed his views later on but the Mortimer Wheeler is the person who said that the Indus Valley civilization, the main reason behind the decline of Indus Valley civilization is Aryan invasion. Why it is important? Because he said that in the Rig Veda, we have an evidence of word, word called Hari Upia. So he said there is a word called Hari Upia and there is also a word Indra and Hidra is denoted like Purandha. So he said since Indra is defined in Rig Veda. In which writing? In Rig Veda as Purandara. And this is the person, this Indra, who is a Purandara in Rig Veda, had destroyed the city of Hariyupa, which is considered like Harappa. So Mortimer Wheeler concluded that the Harappa was destroyed by Purandhar who was Indra and Indra was the main god of Aryans. So this is one such debate. The other proud he said that Mohan Jodro Mohan Jodro is a fort and the fort of the Mohan Jodro was destroyed by this person. So there is a lot of evidence that the Sita Dale of Mohan Jodro had been destroyed by Aryan invasions. So the main causes behind the decline of our Indus Valley civilization was Aryan invasion. The Aryans came here, they destroyed the people of Indus Valley civilization and then they settled down in north part of India near the Sapchindu river. But this judgment is not true. Why the, some, the other sets of people are coming and they are identifying that there is no evidence of attack on the lower towns of Mohanjodo. If there could have been invasion by Aryans, if the Aryans may have come and destroyed the city, so there may be have been some skeletons. So there may be 
there should be a evidence of skeleton okay skeleton found near the sites of mohenjo-daro so there is no evidence of skeleton that is why it is concluded that the RN invasion may not be one point behind the decline of industrialization in basis. If you go further, what do you find? The Sam people, especially the category in this, we have M. R. Sahani and Robert Wright. They argue that the flood is the main reason. There's evidence on these sites that the sands of river are available on these sites. So the flood may have come and the people may have left the places. So that is one such reason behind the decline of industrialization. The flood is the second reason. The other set of people who said, especially the H.T. Lambrick, he said that Indus River, Indus and the Tributaries River may have changed its course. So the water course of the river may have changed and the now the people who were settled during these sites had no water resources. So that is why these people had to move to other sites. So the changing course of the river Water is the other cause behind the decline of industrial civilization in Toronto. St. Lambry. The other people say there is environmental change. Environmental change means there may may have the same the flood. There may be drought due to the shortage of rain. The drought may have come, so the people had no nothing to eat. Then we have drought, flood, earthquake. So these are the main and the other important aspects will be deforestation. So these people were becoming slowly and gradually urban. So these people were cutting trees. So deforestation, if there will be deforestation, there won't be rain. And if there won't be rain, agriculture cannot happen. So environmental change is the other aspect of understanding for the invasion, for the decline of Indus Valley civilizations. If we go further, what we find that there's a historian called Fair Service. He said, that the overpopulation is the main cause. Due to the emergence of city states, there was a rise in the population, in the number of population of the people of Indus Valley civilizations. And now the time came when the trade was declining and there was an overpopulation and the people had nothing to eat. So overpopulation of the civilization is also one of the main causes according to fair service behind the decline of Indus Valley civilizations. But apart from this, there is a historian called Sidin Nakar, especially Sidin that Nakar argues that no, these are the no, not sufficient causes behind the decline of Indus Valley civilizations. The trade is most important. And the trade, especially trade in the category called Lapis Lazuli, especially the trade of precious stone. Precious stones. So especially the trade, when the trade was declining and trade and commerce is the most important aspect upon which all the sites, all the city states of Indus, Indus Valley civilization were depending. So once the trade declined with most of these sites, maybe because of these reasons, suppose that if we discuss Aryan invasion may be one cause. So Aryan people came, they destroyed Rappa and Mohanjadro. But about the other sites, other sites, let's say Lothal or Dhalavira. So other sites may have declined due to the flood, due to the change of river, maybe due to the environmental changes, or maybe due to the overpopulation. So suppose there are 10, 12 sites in the Indus Valley civilizations. One site declined from one region, other sites may decline from the other region. So what was happening, suppose one city was dependent on some important aspects of trade. So one side declined, so other side will also be declined because these all sites were dependent on each, each other for trade and commerce. So decline of trade is one of the main important aspects of Indus Valley civilizations here. We come to understand. All right. So this is the way we come to finish that Indus Valley civilizations in date by the time of 19. So the process in which this civilization was declining was from 1900 to 1750. So by the time of 1750, Indus Valley civilization complete 
decline. And then what we find that after about 250 years of the decline of Indus Valley civilization, that was 1750, there is evidence of Vedic civilization in India. So the Vedic civilization starts in India, the Vedic period starts in India from 1500 and that will be coming till the time of 16, 600 BC. So this is one date that we will be discussing in the next video. In the in next video, I will be especially talking that how Vedic is started in India, what is the main its component, the society, polity, culture, economy, and then how the society, culture, economy, polity of the Vedic is transform so a radical change into the later Vedic place. So in the next video, we will be talking on the period of India from 1500 to 600 BC. And then after in India, what happened? Iron came in around 1200 BC and everything changed. Iron will lead to agriculture. Agriculture will form state. Trade will form cities. Cities will form states. The states will be powerful because they will be having now taxes. So states will maintain army and in this time there were the Janpas who now become Mahajanpas. And out of these Mahajanpas in 600 BC, there will be one powerful ruler in India. So out of the 16 Mahajanpas, the one Mahajanpas that was murdered become very powerful. And just after 300 to 400 years, after the, after the end of the later Vedic period, we see that there was a rise of Magad Empire and then in around 321 BC, we found that there is an empire called Mauryan Empire founded by Chandragupta Maurya, which was one of the largest and vast empire of Indian history. So all that we will meet in the next video and that will be discussion on the Vedic period. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share our channel and if you have any doubt, please comment. Thank you.